Thanks again for joining us on the program this morning on ITV. Monday morning, I've got Idehe Ebomoyi, is a development economist, also a former banker, and former, uh, that's the state secretary of ADC. Many thanks for joining us, Idehe. Good morning, Sonny. Good morning. Okay, um, counting the cost of COVID 19 is a reality. I mean, oil price just going down. I don't know what it is now. And that's a big, big challenge for both the developed world and even the developing world. I'm sure it's worse for the developing world like Nigeria. W what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, honestly, it's uh, a huge challenge for developing countries like Nigeria that we virtually live on virtually on a day-to-day -day basis and we don't have a lot of uh, buffers to cushion the effect. You know, there are so many parameters you look at when you look at developed countries and a case like ours. Yes, oil uh, uh, price is dwindling, which happened initially before the COVID when the Russians and the OPEC cartel were having a tussle on a, uh, quota Allocation. allocations and okay. all of that. That also affected the price. And looking at our projections as a country on the budget at 57, 58 dollar per barrel, mm. that would have affected our budget. Then if you screw down or go back to 2017 when we had the global recession, which was as an effect of uh, subprime loans from the US, from mortgage, you could see the effect that it had on the global economy. And we now look at COVID-19. And the 2007 subprime loans, if you mirror into that, affected basically the financial sector of the world global economy. Yeah. But if you look at COVID-19 today, it has affected all the facets of human existence. Mm. You look at the uh, educational sector, schools are closed. You look at uh, the health sector, overstressed. You look at sports. You look at uh, uh, agricultural sector. You look at uh, hospitality, tourism, hotels, all shut down in major countries. And when you look at the oil sector that you've mentioned, which is where we get most of our revenue yeah. from as yeah. a country, yeah. you look at situations by countries in Europe, they've already shut down, and the demand for oil has reduced. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're hovering between $20 per barrel for yeah, the past. $11 or thereabouts. Or thereabouts yeah. for the past uh, weeks. Yeah. And has been, there has been a downward uh, uh, slide. But Basically, for me, you have to look at the negatives. We've had challenges in the past. Uh, mal administration not planning properly. But we have to also look at past COVID. The issues that I look at, I've looked at a lot of analysis from different economists. But if you look at it critically, we have had our challenges. People have been apportioning blames. Government has not been up and doing, looking at the health sector, looking at education, looking at what we'll be investing in these areas, and looking at how we're managing our economy. Yes, there are defects, which we quite agree, which is not synonymous to only this particular administration they go. Subsequent administrations, right from uh, when we had our democracy in 1999, and even yesterday, looking at the conversation we ha they had on channels, whereby the present uh, NDC, they are having a, a COVID-19 scandal, where they are going to send themselves to, to EFCC. <laughs> and these are people that were asked to do an audit report to find out what had been happening about <laughs> funds that have been allocated to NDC. We have those peculiar challenges. Yes. But I also believe that this particular point that we are in today, as a people, as a country, yes, it's good to apportion blames, criticize positively, but we are all caught up in a web. Should we continue to start apportioning blames? Continue me, to lament? We need to, yes, we have to lament, ag agreed, but we need to start preferring solutions. We have to start thinking about post-COVID-19, 
economically or otherwise. We need to rejig our physical and monetary policies. I believe the government is also thinking in that regard. There are other economies that have also said we need to uh, spend money on palliatives. For me, I don't think Nigeria, Nigeria is already overstretched. And no matter the number of palliatives we decide to invest in, well, individuals have been doing that beautifully enough. Organizations when they come in, yes. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's good for cosmetics, in my own opinion. If you look at our economy, our economy is a 1.747 trillion naira economy. So if you are looking at taking 2% of that economy, you will be talking about 4 trillion naira. And if you decide to invest 4 trillion naira as palliatives, you're talking about the uh, aviation industry, you're talking about schools, you're talking about uh, agricultural sector. They not think about already impoverished Nigerians. Because if you look at the statistics and the data that is given out by uh, the uh, Bureau of Statistics Property Index Watch, okay. we have about, if not mistaken, about close to 19 something million Nigerians living below poverty. Hmm. How are you going to be able to kind of like give them palliatives continuously? So, my own solution to this is this. Let's, yes, it has happened. We are in it. We need to fine tune measures because it will change our lives the way we live in every sector. We need to fund two measures immediately. The fiscal policy between the CBN and the Ministry of Finance should come together. One, you, there are indices you have to look at. You look at those indices in the sense that, look at, look at the oil, look at revenue from the oil. It's more of the federal government thing. But you have to look at the other sectors, the private sector, which is the real sector of the economy. Okay. You talk about services, you talk about all those things. You look at it from the angle that, one, the, these sectors, you need to woo in investors. How do you bring in investors? You need to have uh, look at our inflation rate, and you have to marry it with interest rates. And that is where the CBN and government needs to come together and fine tune packages, compact packages that would woo in investors that would see them, that would, uh, they would look at it and say, okay, this is an opportunity for us, and they will bring in th their funds. And secondly, another thing I also want to speak to is the issue of complete shutdown. For me, I hold a contrary opinion to completely shutting down our economy. Government cannot, at this point, be able to give palliatives. Because, one, you are borrowing to fund consumption. Mm. You're not borrowing for infrastructure. Okay. Infrastructure that government needs to invest on are infrastructures that will repay itself immediately and stimulate the economy. The way it is now, you find out that we're already in recession. As we speak, the world itself is, is in recession. recession. Okay. And Nigeria just came out from recession 2016. We're still grappling with that gradually before this COVID-19, which none of us anticipated, anticipated for. Yeah. You now find out that as at the last report, our GDP was hovering between 2.3 2.2. As at the next report that you see, it will drop to about 1%. And subsequently, we are looking at a production of between minus 2 and minus 4. After this whole epidemic goes off, we, that is why I'm advising that government should systematically think of reopening our economy, systematically looking at the figures. Because if you look at what the state government has done today in Edo State, for me, it's applaudable. Looking at the, number of, the numbers of uh, ah, index cases yeah, that we have, yeah. the number of people that are leaving the hospital, mm -hmm. if you look at it, it's about... 17 or thereabouts, yeah. or 18 yeah. or 19 or thereabouts, people, then the number of deaths. But if you look at the statistics from malaria, in Nigeria, for example, every year, over 300 persons die of malaria and infection. We're not looking at those, so we need to look at these indices for us to make an informed decision because if we start to shut down completely, yeah. the effect on the economy will be very intense and we might find it very difficult to recover, to on, time. recover on time all right let, let, let me thank you uh idea boy i mean um if, if we have time probably would have had um a version of our earlier interview but you know time is of essence thank you so much for the useful insight that you brought to bear that's our program for today on this morning on itv we hope you enjoyed it while it lasted be sure to join us tomorrow a fresh episode of the program will be up and running Till then, stay blessed and bye for now.